ta'ala he wants us to attain god consciousness being mindful of allah basically having taqwa but if we look towards the scientific aspect of uh, the benefits of fasting then we come to find that many various different doctors regardless of whether they are muslim or not they have found unlimited benefits of fasting and actually i was doing a couple of research before this lecture of mine and there was one doctor his name is dr berg and he mentioned that the benefits of fasting especially on our body are countless so first of all he said that when we fast obviously we're not putting anything into our bodies from sunrise basically from that fajr time until maghrib time basically from sunrise to sunset and what he said was a little bit like it was astonishing because he said that when we are fasting then what happens is that any toxins in our body so anything that is bad in our body especially as desi people because we eat a lot of oily foods right and it blocks up the whole system it blocks up the arteries and even the doctors are like you know they're telling us that don't eat those specific foods but some of us still eat it and we eat a lot of carbohydrates so that also makes a lot of glucose and it makes the blood sugar levels go up right so he was saying that if you were not eating anything and if you keep the body as it is by not eating anything by keeping it empty then what happens is that the body begins its automatic uh, purification process right and what this does is it makes your body much more healthy and he was talking about how in our large intestines our main immune system is actually linked towards it so if there are very few toxins and the body is basically cleaning itself then that helps in increasing immunity number one number two it also helps to increase the antioxidants right so like for example if you eat any fruits especially like berries they have a lot of antioxidants which are actually good for us so even like the apples the peaches the bananas and all of the various fruits they are good for us in order to boost our immune system and boost our immunity because our immune system is very important it is very vital to our survival um, we actually got to know more about it about the immune system during the covid 19 pandemic right i mean you might have heard of a, maybe a friend or relative that they didn't have any symptoms of covid but they were tested positive for covid but even though their quarantine was like very light because their immune system was strong and on the other hand you have some people that maybe they even tested negative but it came out as a false negative and they ended up being in the hospital and even when they went on the ventilator it didn't even help them and they ended up passing away right so building up our immune system is very very important because even the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a very famous hadith he has mentioned that qala an-nabiy sallallahu alaihi wasallam al-mu'minun qawiy khayrun min al-mu'min al-dha'if that the strong believer the believer who is physically and mentally fit is better he is much more ahead of the believer who is weak who doesn't have that strong body right so islam is a complete way of life right islam is not just about rituals theology about just doing ibadah just the five pillars of islam no rather islam is a way of life and it has taught us every single thing on how to do it in order to live a successful life in this dunya so coming back to the points regarding the body now there was one japanese doctor who did a lot of research regarding fasting and what he said was was that when we're fasting obviously we talked about the toxins the other thing was that it increases the functions of our various organs right because they're also getting rest because around the year 11 months we're all eating at least like three meals or even some even more each sing, every single day so that keeps our body working 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 right but ramadan is that kind of is that is that month actually which helps into reducing the level of activity in our digestive system and it basically calms everything down the other thing in regards to the body is that it makes our body much more stronger right for those of us who have been fasting and you also if you even fast around the year especially on like mondays and thursdays for the sunnah fasts then you might have witnessed that you have a lot of energy you don't feel lethargic you don't feel sleepy you don't feel tired you don't feel 
exhausted in a way. At least from around like uh, like 10 a.m., 11 a.m. up until Asr time, you have a lot of energy and you can get a lot of things done. So this is also something which some people have seen. And another point to mention is that there was actually one uh, employer who is actually not a Muslim. But what he saw was, was that his Muslim employees in the month of Ramadan, they were actually more pr productive because of fasting. And he said that they were able to get you know, a lot of things done in a very short period of time just because you know, they're fasting. So my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, when we fast, the main effect on our mind is that we become more agile. Right? We become more what you would call like more present in what's going on right now. So our concentration level increases, right? And besides that, a, a couple of more things on our mind. So even in our brain, various portions they are there. And so what happens is is that our mind is able to think properly, right? There's no like like some people they may have some cloud in their judgment or something. But when you're fasting, everything becomes much more clear. Everything becomes much more serene as well. And another point to mention regarding the mind is that it also helps in uh, increasing our memorization, our memory. So that's why you have seen that many of the Hafa, they are reviewing their Quran during the day, right? So basically after Dhuhr Salah, they start to review up until Asr time. So they use, they utilize that time. So fasting it also helps our mind in uh, understanding information, also memorizing it, and also it increases retention of the uh, memory. So that is also another benefit of fasting. And many people have seen that, that you know, when they're fasting, they're able to remember many things much more, like a lot of things, they're able to remember it a lot. And so that helps them in their overall uh, work ethic and stuff like that. Now, when we come to towards the soul, this is a little bit lengthy. So, first of all, re with regards to the soul, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He says in Surah Bani Israel that that they ask you about the soul. Tell them that this soul of yours is actually the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And that we have given you very little knowledge about it. Right? So, in reality, if you, will, if you look at our bodies, we're basically made of two things, right? Jasad and Ruh. Body and soul. We have a, like, we have Jisam and Ruh. So, with regards to that, Every single person does have a body. But what's the difference between a person who is alive and a person who is dead? What's the difference, my dear brothers and sisters? No ruh. No ruh, yep. And so that's something which, which tells us that the ruh is something which gives us movement, right? It gives us harakah. And so if you pick up like a dead body's hand, right? And you try to keep it up here, does it stay up here or does it come down? comes down, right? Well, what if it stays up? Alive. He's alive then. Okay. <laughs> then you're giving the ghusl to the wrong person maybe. So, the soul is a very important aspect of our uh, life, right? And so, with regards to the soul in terms of fasting, what's like the linkage between them? So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants us to fast and the, and the effect on our ruh is that around the year, 11 months, we're pretty much fulfilling all of our desires, right? Whatever we need, whatever we want to eat, whatever we want to do, we're getting it, right? Like for example, you come for Isha one day in the summer, and after that you want to go out for some ice cream, you get it, right? Because you're not fasting or anything. So, just to give that analogy. So with the ruh, with the soul, around the year we're giving it. We're giving it all attention that it needs. But in Ramadan, the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us Muslims to abstain from drinking and eating and also to abstain from our wives uh, in terms of having any relations with them. It is so that we are able to concentrate on getting towards God consciousness, towards getting towards taqwa, right? And so besides that, the soul, the ruh, right? Its food is also the Qur'an, right? 
and how we are supposed to read the Quran and also understand it and all of that stuff. It was mentioned, all, all of that was mentioned yesterday. Now, besides that, if we're specifically talking about the ruh and how does it relate to fasting? When we fast, we are depriving our body of food and drink and all of the other desires that we have, right? So what happens is that our soul and even our mind, both of them, they help us to think that why am I here in this dunya? What is my purpose in this world? Am I here to live forever? Am I here to stay forever? Am I here for a higher purpose or goal? Or am I here to just run in the rat race that everybody is running in, working nine to five, going, picking up kids, dropping them off to basketball practice or any sports practice, then bringing them to the masjid, then coming back home, having dinner, praying Aisha, going to sleep. That's a typical rat race lifestyle, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam. But in Ramadan, especially our soul and also even in, even in our mind, it helps us to start to think that what is our purpose in life? And let me tell you something interesting. You might be aware that my father, Imam Jawad Ahmad, he is a part of Y Islam. And during COVID, even in lockdown, they actually had so many calls on that hotline in Y Islam that you know they had to have like more associates for that. And one lady, she called from a very remote town in Virginia. Has anyone heard of Virginia Beach, Virginia? Anybody? Yes? So generally, it's a, it, everybody knows it, right? But even within Virginia Beach, it was a very small town. And so this lady calls up and she says that, you know, I was reading the uh, translation of the Quran in English, right? And again, this is COVID-19. Everybody, everything is closed. Everybody's in lockdown, right? So this is, we're coming towards that same point of that you're basically cut off from society and you don't really have anything to do. So then you start to think, right? So when you start to think, then, you know, things start to pop up in your mind. And that is, that is exactly what happened to that lady, that she read the whole translation of the Quran in just two days. That's like almost 15 just per day. Think about that for a second. And so what she said in that call was that after she read the Quran, it basically made, her, made it clear to her that Islam was a true religion not just because of its beliefs, but also because it is a complete way of life. And this lady, she herself, she said that she was a Christian, right? So she believed in the uh, Christian faith. Now, after she took her shahada, a couple of days later, she called back and she said that, you know what, now even my daughter wants to accept Islam, right? So my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, this is what happens when we give the due diligence or the due rights to our body, mind, and soul. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Rum, He mentions a very uh, interesting verse by saying that فِطْرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا لَا تَبْدِيلًا لِخَلْقِ اللَّهِ That every single person, they are born on the fitrah. The fitrah is the human nature, right? And so فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا That everybody is born upon the fitrah. And that لَا تَبْدِيلَ لِخَلْقِ اللَّهِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He doesn't change the creation, right? And similarly, even the Prophet sallallahu has mentioned in a narration that everybody, كُلُّ مَوْلُودٍ يُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ That every single child is born upon the fitrah, right? So every single child is born upon Islam. But it is actually their parents who make them like, oh, you have a widani, you're a They make them a Jew or a Christian or even a fire worshiper and it goes on like that. So... Linking this to the point regarding about the soul is that our soul is something which gives us movement in our body and it also helps us to understand various aspects of life. So our mind is also linked towards the soul, but the soul is something that it gives us various desires, however, right? So that is why in various portions of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that وَلَا تَتَّبِعُ الْهَوَىٰ That don't follow your desires because whoever, those people who follow their desires فَيُذِلَّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ They actually go astray from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this comes to tell us that you know what, if we analyze and we look towards the overall benefits of fasting on the body, mind and soul, subhanAllah, this Fasting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with, it is actually a great gift. Because first of all, our body becomes pure. It becomes 
crystal clear and it becomes serene and a lot of the toxins they come out right and with with regards to the mind we become more agile we become more uh, present in the in the what in the world like what's going on and with regards to the soul it helps us in our nafs to be able to understand that you know we have a higher purpose in life right we're not just here to accumulate the dunya and just you know live for here like many people they argue that you know we're supposed to be living this life of yolo like yolo means you only live once so it's a technical statement but it's somewhat true and somewhat not true and i, I will explain how it's true and not true and how it's false it's true in a way because you're only living one time to accumulate a lot of good deeds which will help you get into jannah Right? Inshallah. Everybody wants to go to Jannah, right? Yes. Okay, Inshallah. Because some brothers, they just don't want to say so. You have to say you want to go to Jannah, Inshallah. But it's somewhat not true, the YOLO issue of the thing, because we are going to live again, right? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in various places, He has mentioned that, you know, we will resurrect you, like you will come back, right? You will come back to life and we will send you either to Jannah or Jahannam. So, it's true in a way that we only have one shot to do what we can in this dunya to accumulate for the akhirah, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the very end portion of Surah Munafiqoon that وَأَنفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ أَحَدَكُمْ وَالْمَوْتِ That spend in the path of Allah from whatever we have given to you, whatever wealth we have given to you مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ أَحَدَكُمْ وَالْمَوْتِ Before you, like the, the time of death approaches you and that you will say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لَوْلَا أَخْرْتَنِي إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ that Ya Allah give me some more time so that I am able to spend more time and do what? فَيَقُولَ رَبِّ لَوْلَا أَخْرْتَنِي إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ فَأَصَّدَّقَوْا أَكُمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ so that I, I will be truthful in becoming one of the righteous but what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the very end of that verse? He says وَلَنْ يُؤَخِّرَ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهَا That whenever the time is up for somebody, the time is up. There's no overtime, there's no extra time, there's no like, you know, rescheduling of the date or something. No. Your time is up, your time is up, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send the angel of death and he will extract your soul. And وَاللَّهُ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of whatever we are doing. So this comes to tell us that, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, that this time that we have in this dunya is very, very important. It's very vital for us to understand that we need to make the most of this time that we have in the dunya. A very famous quote from uh, Hadad Ali ibn Talib, he would say that, Al Naja Al Naja Al Waha Al Waha, that basically run towards pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what this also means in, in Urdu is that jaldi karo, jaldi karo. Like everybody is in a hurry, right? Like even when I was coming here today, I tried to leave on time and there was so much traffic. So everybody gets frustrated in traffic, right? But subhanAllah, there's actually one car that was on fire. So subhanAllah, may Allah make it easy for that person. So this comes to tell us that everybody is anxious. We all want to do things quickly. We want to, you know, finish school on time. We want to finish college, get a job, you know, basically get into the dunya, earn the dunya, and us do stuff like that. But what uh, the Ali is saying that, okay, it's fine to hasten, but hasten for good. Hasten to do good deeds. Hasten to please Allah. Hasten to be there on the forefront to be able to get the shafa'ah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? So do, be hasty, but do it in good things. Right? And, you know, as we have mentioned in, in various places and many, many talks, that in an overall sense, death is inevitable. Right? And when we are fasting, fasting is also a way to prepare us for death. Because it helps us to understand the various aspects of what is going to happen. Right? When we leave this dunya, and especially Allah, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, he would go to the graveyards after Asr Salah. So that's also one thing that is supposed to be done.
But again, coming back to the main topic regarding the benefits of fasting, the benefits of fasting, they keep on going on and on, right? As I mentioned that there's many antioxidants that actually are produced in the body and that it's a whole cleansing process for our body. And it helps us in removing the minor illnesses and sicknesses. And actually there was actually one doctor, he was doing some more research and he had a couple of cancer patients. And I'm not saying that this is for all cancer patients, but it was a very specific cancer, maybe like stage one or maximum stage two. And he said that when his patients began to fast, and so their cancer over the, over, the, over the course of time, like maybe either six months or a year, and also with regular checkups and you know, making sure everything is fine, that cancer went away. So SubhanAllah, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, this is the beauty of our deen, that we don't have like man-made laws in it, but rather we have a higher being, a higher power, who is dictating in a way, and who is also guiding us in a way, to tell us what is right and what is wrong. And so, basically coming towards the conclusion, number one is that fasting is a very big blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? There is no doubt that every year Ramadan comes and fasting, it helps us in our immunity. And then besides that, fasting, it also helps in our overall health. And it makes, uh, for some people, they're able to lose some weight, like maybe a couple of pounds or so. So it's a good you know, starter to start losing weight, becoming healthy. And besides that, fasting, if you also analyze in your home, that you, know, you may not be eating that much at home, right? And you don't have to cook like three meals a day. So some people, they also save up on that money from all of that money by spending it on food. They save it, and for some people, you know, if they have even more money, they just sponsor the iftar in the masjid, right? This is also a way to earn more hasanat and to earn more of the good deeds in this blessed month of Ramadan. So we, we also have some savings related to fasting because you're not going to be eating three times a day. You're only eating basically at iftar and suhoor. And if you have like another meal after tarawih, so that's just something right over there, right? So that's one thing. The other thing is that fasting in general, it also brings a community vibe to the community. What do I mean by that? If you look towards, um, especially on the weekends in you know, big Islamic centers throughout the U.S., we have community of thoughts. And you really see how the community comes together by having those of thoughts. Like there's brothers who are serving the food, there's brothers who are you know, helping out in other places. So it brings about unity within the community. And that's what I've seen, mashallah, in most of the masajids overall that you know, there's that sense of serving the people, right? And even the Prophet ﷺ, he has mentioned in a hadith that Qala Nabi ﷺ, Sayyidul Qawm Khadimun, that the leader of a nation is actually one who serves his, his qawm, who serves his people. Because if you are serving towards the people and you're not basically acting as a dictator, then obviously your leadership style is going to be much more effective then not being that effective, right? So that is one thing that we need to mention about and also think about, especially those brothers who are in the masjid board and the leadership, they need to rethink this idea of masjid board, like, right? It's not about being a masjid chaudhri and just coming out and, you know, basically walking in a certain style and being arrogant and just being like a director and telling people what to do. Being a leader, it brings about humbleness, it brings about humility in us. And that is also another thing that fasting brings about in people. That when we're fasting, it helps us to understand the pain of those people who are hungry, of those people who don't have food to eat, right? Uh, there's actually one um, organization they do every week on Saturdays in New York City by Times Square, they do food distribution. And uh, one time I went there on, on a Saturday night and subhanAllah, the people in line, imagine, this is New York City, and this is like the main hub of New York City. This is Times Square. Like you might be thinking that a lot of people will be rich, but no, there were more than 100 or 150 people in line just to get food from that uh, place that we had over there. So that comes to tell us that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave us fasting as a gift so that we are able to benefit from it we are able to make sure that our bodies are strong and that we are able to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And just I'll finish with this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a uh, hadith of Qudsi, he mentioned through the Prophet that that fasting is for me, so I will be giving its reward on the day of judgment. And those people who fast, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them enter into Jannah from Babur Rayyan. So Babur Rayyan is going to be a special gate of Jannah. Uh, which only through uh, the people who fasted, the Sa'imin and Sa'imat, uh, they will be entering through that gate into Jannah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us amongst those who enter Jannah to for those through Babur Rayyan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow all of us to act upon whatever has been said today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow all of us to be able to uh, drink from the blessed hands of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the Hawthi Kawthar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow all of us to gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we are able to free our necks from the fire of Jahannam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu alayhi wa lakum wa risa'i wa muslimin fa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ghafur rahim. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Nashhadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Nasaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Jazakallahu khair. Takbir.